Hi, my name is Brittany and I work for the company CAD Planners. Today I'm going to show you a quick demonstration video on how CAD Planners enhances the software visio for the hospitality industry. Now what you see in front of you today is on your left hand side you've got your shape stencil. Now we create that shape stencil for you to fit true to scale to fit your furniture and equipment that you use in your venue. Now the way we get that information is we will ask you to send us an email with a list of furniture that you require, the dimensions of the furniture and then we go ahead and create them to look just like this that you see on the left hand side. Now like I said this, this stencil can be added to and removed to at any time of the day, um, no extra cost so please do feel free to be greedy. Okay. Now up the top here you'll see these copy up, copy down, copy left, copy right buttons, all your layers, table numbering, zooming, PDFs, etc. This is our CAD Planners toolbar that we create to enhance the software visio. So this is where you'll get all amazing features to make sure your plan is accurately of scale. And on the right here is a template slash ball pen that we created for Melbourne Park Function Centre. So your plan can look exactly like this. So we can create no build zones for you to look just like this. We can put them on a layer so you can hide them like that just by ticking a box that will all be hidden. You can also put your mouse over any door to open and close those doors. Just like that. And you can also control your operable walls from down in this legend. So if we just go down like that, simply or just one click of a button. Now over down here in this little key, you'll see contact CAD planners, training material and select layers. So if you ever needed to contact us for any support or any questions, you can simply just double click on that and it will automatically take you to our website on our homepage. Okay. If you have forgotten how to use a feature or you feel a little bit for need um, for some training, simply double click on training material and it will take you straight to our training videos and mouse mats. Now this select layers, if you double click on that, it will show you all the layers that are on your floor plan. So here in your layers, you can control your scale, any legends that are on the plan, you know, your doors, all your operable walls, everything. You can change the color of the layers. You can have the visibility visibility on or off. It's completely up to you. You have complete control. Now, I'm going to show you quickly how to use all our CAD planners tab using the shapes all in the software Visio. So I'll start off by your zooming options. Now you've got your zooming options up here. You've got your positive and your negatives. You've got your page, which will take you to your your full page for zoom. You've got your last zoom, which will take you to the zoom you were previously at. And you also have this nifty little trick. You go control and shift on your keyboard. My pointer tool will now turn into a magnifying glass. I then draw my marquee around the area I would like to work in and it will zoom me straight into there. Okay, so I'm gonna show you how to do a dinner dance. Now, Visio is a drop and drag system. Anything that you see on the floor plan today is true to scale. So you drop, you drag and you drop. Now, if I just zoom in here, this grey circle around this table is located in your layers. So if you click layers and you go to table boundary, you'll see table boundary. Now I like to make that a brighter colour for the reason being is that is showing me the distance between my tables. Now I know that distance by double clicking on the shape and it says distance between tables 1.5. So if you have a request for 1.65, simply just type it away on the keyboard and click OK. Now, what I do is I go copyright, copyright across, and that's copied that shape right, exactly the scale with that 1.5 meter distance. Now, you know that if your circles are overlapping like that, that people aren't going to be able to get in and out of their seats, and also your waitering staff will not be able to get through. It also shows you if you're going to be running into the way of a door, any petitions, any pillars, anything at all. Now, even though this is visible to me on the floor plan, if I scroll down, you'll see that the print line for table boundary is not ticked. So when I print that to PDF or whatever it may be, those red lines will not, not be showing. So you have complete control of that as well. So what I'm gonna do is go copy down and just with four clicks of a button, I now have my rows of my tables. I'll then just draw a box to select them all and use the arrows on my keyboard to move them into the correct place. 
Okay. Now, with these tables, you have a bunch of features just on the round tables itself. So, what we can do is we select them all, and this shape and config window up here, it's magical. So, here you can change the number of chairs around the table, so we'll go A. You can change the distance, but we already did that at the start. You can hide the table number, you can hide the chair number, and you can hide chair numbers. So, we'll click OK. And you'll see just like that okay now you can even number those tables so if I select them all and go table numbering for zigzag you'll see six different ways in a snake view form that I can automatically number those tables so automatically we'll just go left to right right to left you'll see it's done just that now if from here I go table manual numbering it will ask me next number assigned so so it stands out for you today I'll go 200 and you simply just start clicking away on the tables and it will go up in increments of one. Okay, and then you close that window. Now, if I wanted these two ends here to be cabaret style, it's simple as you just select the tables you'd like the changes to be made, back to the shape and config window, and you'll go cabaret to true. Just like that. You just click on it, grab that access point, and just rotate to rotate your shapes. You also have rotating options up here. In our toolbar, you've got four different ways to rotate as well. Okay, now I'm just going to select that and move that to the back a bit. Okay, so from here, I'm going to go to my layers and I'm going to turn my table boundary off. There you go. Now to make these stand out, I'm going to type in VIP on the table, okay, just by simply clicking and typing away on my keyboard, and I'm even going to fill them a different colour. So because Microsoft Visio is a Microsoft product, and so is Microsoft Word, they all coincide one another. So this is all like Word, where you can change your text, you can change any text on a shape, any size, any colour, anything. It's completely up to you, and we'll go just like that. So from here, I will come down and I will look for my dance floor. Dynamic dance floor, drop and drag that, and it will ask me my width and my length. Okay, and that text looks a little too small for me, so I'll come up to here, and I'm going to change the text. Okay, then from here, I might need my bridal table, so I come to my shapes, drop and drag my bridal table over. Double click on the bridal table, and it comes up this window. So you get number of chairs length, I might want that 20, and the width I want one, and click OK. There you go. I might even want to type the new marriage couple's names on there as well. Okay, so you know a cake table might be there, you might come all the way down, you know you might even want to put a few band players there, it's completely up to you, it's just a matter of dropping and dragging onto the floor plan. Now moving over to the right hand side, I'm going to show you a different layout. So here I'll show you how to do your theatre style. Now I always tell people to drop and drag their banquet chair onto the plan first. Now if I come back into my layers and I turn my table boundary on, you'll see that there's a square around that chair. Double click on that chair and it's going to tell me the distance back to front and side to side. So feel free to change that. That is however set to standard. So from here we go copy right. Now to do maximum capacity the quickest way would be copy to fill the room and then delete the ones that you no longer need from that point onwards. So now everything I'm doing on this floor plan is to scale so I know that there's no mistakes I think everything will fit in this menu. Then you go copy down, you copy the entire row down and all I've done is click that button six times and it's already cut doing multiples exactly to scale in a straight line we know none are overlapping. Okay like that and then from here I always tell people find your middle point but make it to scale. Go down like that, click delete so we've got our aisle and then go horizontal and you get your rows nice and quickly just like that 
Okay. Now you can, with these chairs, if you just right click on the chair and go number shapes, it will come up this window. So you can number your theatre style seats as well. So you can do it manually by clicking or automatic. We can start with number 11, so we might want to start with 1, going intervals of 5, so it's going to go 1, 6, 11. Click OK, and then just like before, you simply start clicking away on the seats. So I chose by clicking, but you can do it automatically as well. So if we zoom in there, OK? So from there, I know that everything's to scale, that all fits, just to make my plan look a bit more spacious, a little bit neater. I turn my table boundary layer off now. It's no longer needed. This row, however, is my VIP, so I'm going to fill them another colour, just like that. So from here, if we make this an award ceremony, you'll come and you'll grab your stage piece. Again, drop and drag, copy them across just like any other shape. And there you have that. Jump straight on. Put your mic there, get your stage pieces. Now I'm just using the arrows on my keyboard to move these stage steps. When I hold in shift, I can move in smaller increments to get really into the nice perfect edges. Okay. Now I'm going to zoom into the lectern, come and grab my person and rotate my person so it's face he's facing the crowd. So you can make it look as realistic as possible. Bring out your projector screens and your projectors. Now speaking of projectors, you may have a few projectors and projector screens that are permanently in your room. We can put them on a layer so you don't have to always drop and drag them, they're just there and just like you have with your petitions down here, you can just put your mouse over it and simply click it clear. Okay, now even with these seats, you can put them onto the stage as well. Okay, so a few people might want to sit down when they get their awards, just like that. Okay, now over on the right here I'll show you how to do quickly a classroom style. Simply drop and drag your table onto the plan, double click it, and it's the exact same windows as your rounds. So here you can choose your chairs length and width, your distance fronts and back, and if you want to hide or remove any text. From here, you simply just copy. And again, that's all to scale. So in just seconds, we are creating exactly the scale layouts, and it's absolutely great. Okay, and I'm just going to do the same thing here, just to get a few. All right, so if I select them all and go shape and config, I want to turn these all to false to actually put text on the tables and you can number these tables and it's the exact same way as you would number your rounds so you just pick one and go okay and then from here you will zoom in and you'll see how the numbers have been done you've got your chair numbers everything okay and from here again you might want to instead of if you don't have a 2.4 by 1.8 stage piece you can come into your home grab your rectangle and simply just draw your own stage. Okay. There we go. Just like that. Okay, so it's really, really simple and really, really, really easy. Now, if you come over here, over to your left, and say for instance you needed to know the distance between, you know, the stage, the no build zone to this petition wall, you just drop and drag your dimension shape onto the floor plan. You drag it over so it's you know perfectly in line and you just go across like that and it will automatically tell you the measurements. Now you can change the decimal point in that by just right clicking on the text coming up to precision and units and going to two decimal points. You don't even have to show the units and you can even change it to feet and inches if you like. Okay you can move the line up and down to get it out of the way of the actual area you're trying to measure or you can drag your text just like that okay so that's showing you how to use our shapes and the toolbar all in one to create your layouts there's a few more features on the toolbar that I'll show you now such as you have this calculator tool now if I wanted to know how many banquet uh, theatre style seats I had on the floor plan all I need to do is click once 
click on the calculator tool and it will calculate how many banquet chairs I have and it will tell me 496. Okay, and that includes these seats on the stage. If you had seats up in the corner here, it's going to include them too. So it's calculating on the entire floor plan. If I click on the stage pieces, it's now going to tell me I have 10 2 by 4 1.8 stage pieces. If I click on my rounds, it will calculate how many rounds I have. So that's really quick. You've got your ungrouping and grouping all up here, just a click of a button. Bring and send to back, same thing, or just one click away. You also have your export and email plan as PDF. So if we click on that, you get three different views of how you can export your PDF. So you've got your raw page, which is this entire view. You've also got selected only, so it would be if you wanted just for instance the skyline room printed. And you also have current view, so it would be if you were zoomed in to a particular area. Okay, so we'll go current view, and then you find the file you'd like to save it in, name it, then you export it. It has automatically already saved, now it's giving me a preview. So from here I can see if I have accidentally left you know, my table boundary layer on, something like that, or if there's a mistake that I couldn't see. Okay, and then from here we can print it or email it, but it's already been saved. Where email plan to PDF, it's a little more different. So if we go email plan as PDF, it's the exact same choice as a view, but the minute you type in an email address here, it's on your app books and it's sent items on its way. Okay. Come back to page. Now you also have some other features that you can use. Alright, now you've got your rotating, you've got seating arc, so I'll just find some room to show you this seating arc. So all you need to do is draw your line and then create your arc, just like that. So two steps, we already have our arc created. Then I click seating arc in our CAD planners toolbar. It says how many chairs can I fit around here comfortably? To be safe, I'll say 10 and I would like the chair numbers. Click OK and it'll automatically create my arc for me. OK, and then from here, I will just delete that. And there's a seating arc. OK, so everything's one click away. Everything's really simple. It is an unbreakable, you cannot break this software. It's very, very much idiot proof. It's really simple. Everything's to scale. And I can, and I know you will be able to confidently know that you have succeeded in creating your floor plans.